So what this gives me now is a quick way to launch into steps. And, and I can launch into those steps, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily this edit and tear scan step, it can be any step that I can configure that quick launch for. Uh, but just wanted to show you the, you know, and then rolled right into the editing mode on the, on the terror scan because it's kind of flew, flowed right into there, uh, makes things a little bit quicker to work with. So the other mode uh, that we can work with here is kind of an automated mode. So I'm going to put myself into automated, and I'm going to say, you know, as I work with these, I'm going to be done with them. So I'm going to set it to complete. I'm going to just uh, toggle on any in this particular case. I'm going to say I don't want any any neighbors uh, as I work through this data set. I just want the particular ones I'm working with. So I'm just going to close out these dialogues so they don't get in the way. And what I want it to do now is as I move in quick launch mode through these entities, here's, I'm going to start with entity 102, and you're going to see here, there's 102 loaded up. I just have to, I didn't flush out my read-only entity, so 126 stuck in there, so I'm going to flush out 126. So I'm just dealing with 102, and that's the only one that's in read mode. And I can go in here and I can make my edits, and one of the things that we've set up in here, I'm going to go back into my into my, uh, I have the right dialogue to begin with, into here, I have automatically saved point set. So if I make any changes to the data set, it's going to automatically save that for me in TerraScan so that I don't have to worry about dialogues come up to save and I don't have to worry about forgetting to save it. It's going to automatically do that as I move through the process. So I've opened up 102 and I'm going to just go ahead and make a, a TerraScan edit here. Um, so let's go ahead and make something that's pretty visible. Um, and so now, instead of going typically, you know, to the next block, I would have had, you know, those massive number of blocks open and everything we record against. I'm only recording the single entity at the moment. And what I want to do is I want to go to the next block. So instead of going to TerraScan and going File Open Block, what I do is just go in, in GeoQ and say, give me that next one, which is 105 in this case. So there's my 105, so basically I can move through this now where I'm going to go through and do whatever my editing is. You know, this is free, free hold, whatever the user wants to do, whatever they're going to review, um, which is what you've typically been working with uh, or using your own tools to kind of navigate in there. And then I go on to my next one, 110. And so there's okay, my quick launch. This is why it's happened. There's my 110. We're just being impatient with it. <laughs> and uh, so I just kind of can move through that sequence now, and it's automatically setting these, but it's, it's doing it as I call the next one. So if I decide that, oh, no, I found a problem in 110, I just pull back open my dialog and say, well, no, in this type case, I want it to set it to a fail state and say, you know, there was data, data missing in, in 110. So when I go on to the next one and go into 117 now, 117 will launch. You know, so I'm in 117, but what it's done is mark that information in 110. And I can just kind of keep sequencing through that. When I need to toggle, I just toggle before I complete. On that way, when I go into now 124 here, 117 would be set to complete. And what we're going to see is I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. So I'm going to do a manual removal just to set that one to complete as well. And now I'm going to take and look at each of the checklist step histories on these. And what we're going to see in the, his, in the history is there you can see the last thing done on it was complete. And we look in the checklist step history and we can see that it was completed. And so I've got a history there that says I was only in that particular block for 13 seconds. You know, obviously I'm, I'm going through these fairly quickly. Um, but you can see the power behind this is that it now gives me insight into each individual block as to what is going on in the particular uh, block and, and what, how long the time was. So I can see, you know, when I roll this information together, I can see what's happening overall. I can see uh, without skewing my stats as much as I was doing before when I had large blocks. And really what this is doing is it's giving me the open block command in, in TerraScan but with the added capabilities where it's automatically recording the information of what I've done, how long I've spent doing it, and the status that it is in when I finish with it. 
So I, I know my project very easily from the synoptic view within GeoQ to be able to see you know, where am I at, what am I doing with things, and that's all going to roll up into the reporting that uh, we're going to cover next week's uh, webinar and into the dashboard product, which rolls all that information to your project managers. So it's doing that in a manner where you're not, uh, you know, the biggest thing here, you're not skewing the stats by leaving something open just because you didn't want to reset the microstation session. And I can leave this microstation session open. So when I close it out and say I'm going to lunch, there I'm closed out, well, no problem. I'll just go to lunch. I'm not recording my time anymore. And uh, we can kind of go from there.